Yodis, it's time for another episode of the CSUSB Advising Podcast. My name is Matt Markin, an academic advisor here at Cal State San Bernardino. Welcome, as always. And for this episode, we're learning more about the master's degree in communication studies. Uh, we have two guests today from the communication studies department, and they are one returning uh, guest uh, from a previous episode, Dr. T.C. Corrigan, and uh, new to the podcast, Dr. Joanna Grant. Welcome both. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So let's jump in. Let's get to know you uh, a, a little bit better. Um, and Dr. Corrigan, even though you were on a previous episode, those that might didn't listen to that but might be interested in this one about the MA and Com Studies, um, let's get to know both of you, your your title, what you study. So maybe we'll start with uh, Dr. Grant. Okay. Um, I'm Dr. Joanna Grant. I'm a professor in communication studies. Uh, my areas of interest are health communication, interpersonal communication, and instructional communication. And I kind of work around the intersections of, of those three things oftentimes, and sometimes overlap into things like um, health and media or um, interpersonal online and, you know, kind of things like that. So wonderful. And Dr. Corrigan. Yeah. Um, thank you, Matt. Um, so uh, my name is uh, Dr. Thomas Corrigan, or TC. Um, I'm an associate professor in the Department of Communication Studies, and I'm the graduate coordinator for the MA in Communication Studies. Um, my, uh, my teaching and research uh, generally focuses around uh, digital media and uh, the political economy of communication. So uh, political economy of communication is the study of uh, wealth, power, and the media. Uh, and so if you know, for instance, the richest person in the world uh, bought one of the most influential social networking platforms like Twitter. That would certainly be of interest to folks who study the political economy of the media. Um, I, I write mostly about research methods in the area. So how do people study media businesses, many of uh, which um, don't necessarily want to want to open up the, the door and let us into the, uh, the boardroom to hear how the decisions go down. but uh, Methodologically, how do we go about uh, making sense of what happens in those spaces and what the consequences are? Uh, very nice. So let's maybe start broad and then work our way uh, to the specifics of uh, the MA. But maybe we start with how you would define communication studies and then kind of going into the, the types of topics that maybe a master's student in communication studies would explore. Um, so I'm not sure who, who wants to start with that. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll jump in. So, um, you know, I, I think one of the most common definitions of communication studies or communication that, that I like is uh, the study of the construction of shared meanings. Um, so, you know, whether we're talking about interpersonal communication, intercultural communication, uh, strategic communication, or, or media studies, um, all of those are, are concerned with how uh, people go about developing a shared understanding of the world and a shared understanding of, of each other. Doesn't mean it always works well. There are certainly misunderstandings, there's misinformation and disinformation, um, but communication studies is, is interested in, in how we come to those shared understandings, whether they're uh, accurate, or, accurate or not, um, and what the implications of those processes are. So um, that's sort of how I, I make sense of communication studies uh, across the, uh, the discipline, um, but Dr. Grant? I ditto with that definition about shared meanings, and that really um, helps us understand this is a broad discipline, and we have a lot of subfields within it. Dr. Corrigan mentioned strategic communication, uh, political economy. I, I talked about interpersonal communication, instructional. There's also uh, intercultural, cultural studies, uh, you know, and it expands and it expands. There's a lot of different ways to look at how human beings share meaning. But really that's, to me, that's the core of what it is to be human is to come together with other human beings and create a shared understanding of the world. That's how we create relationships. That's how we create cultures. That's how we create and maintain our institutions, um, you know, and our societies that we live in. And so to me, that's kind of the heart of what communication is about and why I'm so interested in it. Yeah, and so now that you both have kind of uh, set this foundation uh, of communication studies, maybe we'll talk more about the, the MA in terms of 
how is it structured and, and, and organized? You know, what, what are, what kind of classes are graduates expect to take? And, you know, in a way, how does this differ from being a graduate student versus being an undergraduate? Yeah. So the, um, the MA in communication studies, it's a, it's a two-year program and uh, it's a, it's a 30 unit program. Now, when I say two years, um, it, it's a program that you can complete in two years if you're taking six to nine units per term, which is sort of the, the norm for, uh, for, for graduate students. Uh, we have some students, uh, folks who are working professionals, uh, have uh, families at home, life commitments that might take a little bit longer uh, than two years. And, and certainly that's you know, understood and, and we want them we want them along, right? Um, but you can complete it in two years. And, uh, and we, we also offer our courses in the evenings so that working professionals are able to uh, to, to come attend and uh, and we want you know folks who are uh, you know looking to go into uh, media and communication uh, careers uh, to use their their work in, um, uh, in in professional and community contexts but we also like for folks with those backgrounds to come into our program and be able to share those ideas in our classes um, and so uh, when it comes to like the the organization of the program from from start to finish, uh, in year one, students complete their, their core coursework, um, and that's there's four courses that are part of our, our core, core classes. Um, in their first term, uh, students take Introduction to Communication Studies, uh, which, uh, sorry, Introduction to Graduate Studies, uh, which is a course that prepares students for the sorts of uh, graduate level research and writing uh, uh, secondary research, for instance, using university databases and library databases uh, that are you know, really essential for being able to get the most out of a, a graduate experience. Uh, students also take that, that first term uh, theoretical perspectives in communication studies, uh, which Dr. Grant just, just taught this, uh, mm -hmm. this past fall. Uh, and that course uh, introduces students to theoretical perspectives that are uh, pertinent regardless of whether they're heading into uh, interpersonal communication, uh, media studies topics, strategic communication, uh, sort of those foundational theoretical perspectives, and also you know a chance to explore uh, and learn about uh, theories that that might be a little um, further flung, right? A, an interpersonal communication student, for instance, learning about media theories and, and, and vice versa. So, um, the uh, in their second term. Uh, students take two research methods courses, uh, quantitative and qualitative research methods. Uh, you know, our, our program stresses the, you know, the value of theory, research, and practice. And uh, in that second term, we, we really want you to have a strong methodological foundation, building on those that those uh, theoretical uh, uh, and uh, and beginning research skills in the first term. I want you to really develop those quantitative and qualitative research methods. So uh, when we say quantitative methods, we're thinking about uh, experiments, we're thinking about surveys, uh, quantitative content analysis, where you're, for instance, counting the number of occurrences of, uh, for instance, sex and violence in media content. Um, and the qualitative methods course uh, thinks, uh, you know, explores more uh, methods that are focused on um, meaning and ideas. Uh, so for instance, uh, interview methodologies, um, uh, 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 sorry, interview methodologies, focus groups, uh, close textual readings of, uh, of media and other uh, text-based content. Um, and those are, you know, two two sort of core areas of research competencies that, that it's really valuable for students to uh, have in their toolkit, um, whether they're heading into, um, you know, uh, careers in, in academia or in teaching or in professional practice, those are all, you know, really important uh, bedrock uh, methodologies to, to have uh, on hand. Um, and they're, uh, that, and so those are uh, four courses that students take in their first year they might take a you know a, an elective here here or there uh during the first year also but uh we really want them to, to get that foundation uh in the program uh as they move into year two um in year two students take uh more of their elective coursework um so and this can you know vary depending on a student's interests um over the past year we've offered elective coursework in instructional communication um decolonial theory and methods uh, this spring, we're offering electives in uh, public and political communication uh, and a course 
on the Inland Empire news ecosystem, which I'm, I'm currently teaching. Uh, in the upcoming year, we're going to have elective coursework, uh, including uh, the political economy of communication. So again, that study of wealth, media, and power. Uh, we'll have a course on family communication, uh, strategic planning in public relations, uh, and uh, an exciting course, uh, you know, uh, pertinent or, or uh, very timely in immersive media. So we've heard a lot about topics like uh, the metaverse, uh, for instance, and VR and XR, and we're going to have a, a course focused uh, specifically on those topics by um, uh, Dr. Mutis, or sorry, um, Dr. Popescu, who is the uh, director for the Extended Reality Lab on campus. So, um, you know, a, a wide variety of elective coursework uh, that is, uh, you know, there for students to explore based on, on their interests. Um, in that second year, in addition to elective coursework, um, students might take uh, internships, independent studies. Uh, it's also, you know, it is an interdisciplinary discipline, right? So we've got, you know, their communication studies is informed by psychology, sociology, uh, business history, et cetera. And so we encourage students to, to take courses here and there outside of our uh, department that dovetail well with their, their plan of study. So, um, and then the, the last sort of structural comp component in the program uh, is a culminating experience. So students can choose from one of three culminating experiences. Uh, one is a, a master's thesis. So this is an original research study that the student conducts under the supervision of a, uh, of a, a department faculty member. Um, it might be a survey, it might be a uh, series of focus groups. It's really you know, a student's opportunity to, to use those research methodologies we talked about earlier to answer some important communication question that they wanna um, uh, to, to wrestle with. And, uh, and so you know, a master's thesis is, is one popular option. Um, other students, uh, complete what's called a graduate project. These can vary pretty uh, pretty widely, but um, I like to think of it as the creation of some sort of communication artifact, right? It might be a, uh, a documentary, um, uh, it might be a screenplay, it might be a, uh, a, a marketing plan for a, a company or a guidebook for an organization, but you know, one way or another, it's, it's some sort of active communication that the student has mm -hmm. uh, engaged in. It could be a workshop, Right. And uh, and they it involves research. They put together a manuscript that explains what they plan to do and what they accomplished. And then there's the project itself and executing it. So uh, and then the last culminating experience op option is a uh, comprehensive examination. And this is uh, it's a it, it's it can be a little bit more timely uh, than a, a thesis or project sometimes for for students for whom time is of the essence. Right. Um, but nonetheless, it's still a, a, a rigorous and, um, uh, and and valuable experience in terms of reflecting on the coursework that you've taken up to that point and completing a written examination addressing key questions with respect to your your classes. So um, those are the three options that students have at the end of the program. Uh, and, and that sort of walks them through from, from start to finish. Yeah, and I guess to follow up with that, and I'll be throwing a couple of questions in there. Um, with, uh, you know, you kind of broke down the coursework and you can kind of see the differences between like what an undergrad would take versus mm -hmm. uh, what a graduate would take. But I guess if we talk about like expectations, like someone who's an undergrad right now, there's probably different expectations that a professor might have for them versus like at, at a graduate level. Would you be able to talk maybe a little bit about that? Dr. Grant? Sure, I'll talk a little bit about that. So yes, there are some different expectations and, and one of them is uh, being a little bit more uh, having, you know, kind of the self-management and things like that. Um, you know, doing more readings and more more writing and, and things like that. But one of the things I think that's really strong about our program is in that first semester, that Introduction to Graduate Studies course really takes you through and gives you the tools to be successful as a graduate student and make that transition from being an undergraduate student and those expectations, let you know and kind of demystify the expectations that we have in the graduate program and give you practice learning and applying those skills. So as you go through your graduate coursework, you already have all the skills and tools that you need to be successful in the program. So I know a lot of students have uh, apprehension about, can I do graduate work? 
but at least in our program, it's set up and designed to give you the practice and the tools that you need to be successful off the bat when you start in the fall. The one thing I would add too is, um, you know, I think sometimes with, uh, you know, with an, an undergraduate class, uh, maybe upper division undergraduate classes, you might have an opportunity for a little bit more individualization of, of, mm -hmm. of course mm -hmm. content. Uh, but at the graduate level, you're we're working with smaller classes, right? And you're working much more closely with uh, with individual faculty. And you know, one upside of that uh, is that you've got a chance to to sort of take a class and tailor it to your interests, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I I always tell students, you know. Go into a class with you know whatever it is that you're most curious about you know uh, you know whether it's body image on social media or the experience of different uh, students in the classroom right whatever it happen happens to be and and sort of you know talk to the professor about you know how can I how can I study the what I'm interested in using the theoretical perspectives and methodological approaches of, of this class right. And um, and that's usually something we can, you know, we can work with and figure out, you know, an opportunity for you to, to certainly still get the, the nuts and bolts of that particular class, but figure out how to how can we write a paper that, um, you know, it's uh, that, that, that speaks to your individual interests uh, in communication uh, as a graduate student. Right. And so that's something that uh, smaller class sizes at the graduate level really allow students and faculty to do a little bit more. Uh, a little in a little bit more nuanced way and uh and that's i don't know to me that's half the fun so yeah <laughs> very nice and um you were mentioning before that it's flexible in the sense with this program that the classes are in like the evening time so is this a program that is all uh, on campus uh in person are there any virtual components yeah so we have um most of our courses are offered in person on the San Bernardino campus. Um, we do have uh, some courses that are offered uh, online. Um, it, it's uh, typically you won't be looking at more than one course in a term that would be offered online. Uh, we sometimes offer courses that are hybrid where you're meeting once a week, but doing some significant coursework uh, online collaboratively uh, uh, in, in virtual spaces. Uh, but it is a, a program that is predominantly an online or sorry, a, an in-person face-to-face program. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that's um, uh, good. Good to know in terms of the, uh, uh, the modality for the program. Yeah, absolutely, and of course, something that probably question that comes up is funding. Um, are there any funding opportunities available for graduates who are doing the communication studies master's degree? Yeah. Um, Dr. Grant, do you want to talk about the GTA program and then I can fill in with some some other uh, yeah, Absolutely. Programs? I'll start with the GTA program. So the GTA program, it's graduate teaching associate program. So when students apply for a program, they can also apply to become a graduate teaching associate. And there's an interview process along with that. But what that means is if you're selected, we will train you and support you to teach your own independent class of our oral communication course. Um, so you'll be working with our you know, first year coyotes coming in doing their uh, public speaking class. Um, and that provides a, a stipend that you know, the amount varies based on the contract or whatever per class and you um, get support uh, for me, the coordinator, some professional development. Uh, I come and visit the classes and give feedback to the, the, you know, the instructors, but they are the instructor. There's no, like nobody else in the classroom. You have your own class. So if um, somebody is interested in training or teaching, um, this is a great experience for them. In their second year, if they're doing well, they have the opportunity to take on two sections per semester. Um, you know, for of course increased monies, and again, again, they get the training and the support um, from the coordinator. So that's one opportunity that we have for funding our graduate students. And I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Corrigan for some other ones. Yeah. So, um, you know, the the GTA program it's an excellent program, and uh, it's really sort of the uh, the, the crown jewel of our, our funding opportunities in the program um, uh, are associated with the MA program. 
the we have had a, a couple really exciting other funding opportunities that we've developed uh, in conjunction with uh, other entities around campus that we're very excited about. So one is called the uh, Communication Consultants Program, and that's associated with the uh, the speak or the the Jack Jack H Brown uh, Speaking Center, uh, which is over in the in the College of Business. Um, and what that communication consultant program entails is that uh, communication consultants, many of whom have been MA students in our in our program, uh, will work with undergraduate and graduate students across campus to, to help them prepare for uh, speaking opportunities. Right. It might be a class presentation. It might be a, a job interview. Um, basically, any any time when you need to stand and deliver right um and they will will help students prepare for those uh those moments um uh, and also you know uh, uh virtual uh you know practice with virtual speaking uh engagements like we're like we're doing now right um communication consultants um again many of whom have been ma students in our program i think the last two years we've had five ma students each year who have had um uh who have uh you know are Earned a paycheck, right, for this this work with the uh, with, the, with the speaking center as communication consultants, uh, and in doing so, you know, really getting to to learn, uh, you know, the the oral communication and speaking uh, best practices in that context as well, right. Uh, and some of these uh, students have also been GTAs, right. So we'll have GTAs who are taking their experience uh, teaching uh, oral communication in the classroom and then turning around and in this sort of mentorship and consulting role. Uh, being able to share those insights uh, through the speaking center. So that's one really exciting funding opportunity. Um, and the, the best contact for that is uh, the speaking center here at, uh, at CSUSB. Um, the uh, couple others though, uh, we have students who uh, each year uh, work as instructional student assistants, which you, you might People might, you know, more uh, more commonly think of as as TAs, right? So students who are working with uh, with faculty, uh, usually with large lectures on uh, organization, uh, grading, student feedback, and those sorts of things. And we have MA students who who work in in those roles. Um, we also have MA students who are uh, graduate assistants, and basically what they do there is is work as uh, research assistants for. Um, faculty members in communication studies who are conducting one study or another, and, and oftentimes they have a, some some grant uh, grant funding that they can use to to um, uh, to hire a master student to work with them on a, a project. Uh, we recently had a couple uh, MA students who were working with one of our faculty members, uh, Dr. Theo Mazumdar, on a study of uh, conspiracy theories on Twitter. Right, and so the the graduate students were uh, were coding those tweets, so counting the number of occurrences of uh, different uh, conspiracy theories, who was sharing them, uh, how many folks were uh, uh, they were reaching, and, and and those sorts of things. So, uh, graduate assistantships they they. They change from term to term, but they're also certainly an exciting opportunity, um, not just for you know for funding, but to, to learn communication research uh, theory and practice. Um, the uh, there are also some um, uh, some some funding opportunities that students tap into through the um, uh, one is through the extended reality uh, lab on campus. Uh, the the director for that lab is Dr. Mihaela Pescu, and uh, they have a, a three thousand uh, dollar annual award. Uh, that's called the Innovative Media and Technologies Graduate Research Award. Um, and basically, uh, you know, a student who's interested in a topic like extended reality or machine learning, uh, virtual reality, those sorts of topics, um, they can uh, propose uh, a project that they want to uh, work on uh, funded and the Extended Reality Lab um, may go ahead and support that work uh, under the supervision of a, of a faculty member. Um, we've had students in recent years who have um, uh, secured uh, the uh, a number of uh, campus uh, funding uh, funding awards. Uh, one being the uh, student research and travel award. So if you're uh, doing research or traveling to a conference, uh, the office of uh, student research will fund students up to a thousand dollars annually. And then when students are working on their their culminating experience, so the the thesis or the graduate project that I talked about earlier, uh, you can get up to two thousand uh, dollars that that final year to support you for the research or travel associated with your culminating experience. So those are exciting funding opportunities. Um, last, I'll mention there's the um, 
Graduate Equity Fellowship, uh, which is a uh, an award for students, uh, both need and merit based, uh, to support graduate students uh, for their uh, uh, to uh, uh, continue their graduate studies. And so that's uh, uh, another uh, exciting funding opportunity that our students have been able to to tap into. Yeah, definitely lots of opportunities for yeah. students. So yep. We always tell students like there's opportunities there. Sometimes it falls in your lap. Sometimes you got to go and find it. Or other times it's go to a workshop or talk to the faculty and they will, you will let them know about it. Um, so let's lead into that. What what are other activities that uh, some of your communication studies graduates, what, what are they going to be involved in? Well, um, Dr. Grant, you just uh, talked about the GTA program, which would have been one of the first ones I would, I would mention. But uh, certainly student teaching is a, is a big thing. Yeah, yeah, teaching is a big thing, and our our graduates, you know, go on to like if you look at all the colleges and community colleges in the Inland Empire, you will in the communication program you will see coyotes. They are our graduates. They are chairs of of departments. They're uh, tenured faculty in our community colleges all across the region. They're also involved in uh, training and development programs in institutions and corporations uh, in, uh, you know, supporting and, and that teaching and learning environment again. So that, you know, from the GTA standpoint, those are a couple of things that our graduates go on to do. Um, many of them go on to further their education in a, in a PhD program and having the experience of teaching is often an opportunity for them to get funding for their PhD um, and, and teach at a PhD. And some of them are interested in being professors. Um, and so great way to get experience there. So I'll turn it over to you, TC. No, I, uh, those are two that uh, really come to mind. Uh, the student teaching is, is a really valuable opportunity. I, I'd add just, you know, there's, there's no better way to learn communication than to try to teach it to someone else, right? And so I, you know, I think you, you come out of that experience, uh, not just with teaching experience, but really knowing the subject matter really well. Um, uh, Dr. Grant, you mentioned, uh, you know, students moving on to, to PhD programs. Uh, one thing that I, is just, I think, really worth underscoring is that our students do a lot of really good research here they before do. they before they move on. Um, and so uh, we've got students who each year are participating in the, um, and usually what they're doing is they're, they're taking work from a class, right? It might be uh, the literature review that they do in Introduction to Graduate Study or an, a theory application from the Theoretical Perspectives course or, you know, methodological plans for one of their, their methods courses or, you know, a final paper that came out of an elective. And what they're doing is, is taking those projects and uh, sometimes they, they dovetail, right? You, you work on something early in your, um, your program and sort of stick with it and continue that in other, in other classes. And next thing you know, you've kind of got a research agenda, right? Um, for, for lack of a better term. And they you know, take those projects and then go and, and share them in, in really cool spaces. So uh, we just had four students, um, I guess a, about a week and a half ago, who participated in the uh, uh, student research competition here on campus at CSUSB. Uh, and uh, one of those students, uh, Dia Poole, uh, she was selected to go um, uh, share her research as one of 10 uh, CSUSB students who will uh, share their research at uh, San Diego State University in, in April uh, at the statewide competition. So that we're really excited excited for her. And, and we've had other students in recent years, uh, Alexia Martinez and Shane Burrell uh, before her, who, who both uh, you know shared their research at, at the state level as well. Um, Alexia, I just mentioned, she, she did a really cool study of, um, uh, of discourses around body image on social media. And she presented in a uh, at an event. It, it was it was the uh, three minute thesis uh, this this year. At the, it's called the, the Grand Slam. Uh, but basically, it's a it's a cool event where in in three minutes or less, you go ahead and you explain your thesis or graduate project uh, to a lay audience, right? And and work on effectively communicating uh, what you're up to. 
and uh, and she did a great job in that uh, in that event. Uh, another graduate student, uh, Olabode Lawal, uh, he also presented at that that uh, um, uh, event last year. Uh, and uh, there were you know cash prizes, but you know frankly, just a great opportunity to to share what you're share what you're up to. Uh, and then Alexia got to go on and uh, present at the state level as well. Um, we've had students the last couple of years who have not just presented on campus, but traveled to national and international conferences. Um, this, uh, this past summer, uh, we had three students who went and presented their work uh, in Paris at uh, the International Communication Association uh, Conference, uh, which was just a, you know, an exciting opportunity for uh, international travel, for sharing their, their work with other scholars in the field, and, and we're really, um, obviously, very excited when students have an opportunity to, yeah. to do something. Uh, I'll also uh, put in a plug for Dr. Jess Naren, who uh, recently published a book around disability. And several of our students are our master's students and you know worked on projects in her classes and contributed chapters in that book. So they are actually published authors in our field coming out of our program. So put in a plug for that too. Yeah, the uh, and you know when you bring these sort of these pieces together, not just the coursework, but you know work, you know teaching in the GTA program, um, student research. Uh, we've got another number of students who are involved in uh, campus clubs and activities. Uh, we've got several students this year on the, the Model United Nations uh, team. Uh, we have students in student government, um, and and you know the, you put these pieces together, and students really come out with. Uh, a you know a varied and and deep skill set that is applicable in a range of different contexts. So uh, Dr. Grant mentions you know teaching in the California Community College system and the the, uh, the Cal State system. Uh, we've got students who go on to to funded PhD programs. Just in the past couple of years, we've had students get funded positions at uh, in doctoral studies programs at the University of Oregon, um, University of Illinois, Champaign-Urbana, uh, University of New Mexico, Colorado Boulder, um, Northwestern University, Chapman University. I'm sure I'm leaving something out, but uh, they've really, you know, been, been able to, to secure some, you know, terrific funded positions at, uh, at top universities. And, uh, and last, I'll just mention, you know, they're, you know, teaching and, and scholarship is, is one trajectory, but we have a lot of students who head into public and private sector communication. Um, I was talking to, to one uh, alum, uh, alumna of our program who, uh, you know, during the pandemic was working for uh, Inland Empire Health Plan uh, in media relations. Now, just imagine that, working in media relations uh, for a, a health plan during the pandemic, uh, you know, a, a very, um, uh, you know, timely opportunity to use that skill set developed in communication studies to uh, to make sure that the folks you know associated with their health plan know know what you know opportunities and services they have to be able to, to navigate you know a, a scary and traumatic time so uh, you know it's just uh, you know the range of things you can do with a, an MA in communication studies is is, is quite varied no absolutely and I, and I love hearing about the different um like what your students have done. And I think that will relate to students that might be interested in joining in um, and hopefully applying for this program. So you mentioned a, a few of the different uh, types of careers that your students have gone into. Are there any other uh, careers that you see graduates going into after they graduate with the MA? You know, the, those are the big ones that come to mind to me. Uh, Dr. Grant, do you have any others that you're? Well, I, I think uh, like a variety of nonprofits, like I think about um, some of our, our students have gone to um, either start nonprofit organizations in particular fields um, to support their communities um, or uh, really build a career at a nonprofit. Uh, working on various communication issues, whether it be, you know, promoting the organization from a grassroots standpoint, the media standpoint, the marketing standpoint, um, and helping that organization develop its own community relation plans. Um, things. So those are some of the things that kind of come to mind, but certainly in industry and, you know, we have students, uh, former students that, that work in, you know, 
big PR marketing firms or, or, or large companies you'd recognize like Microsoft or Google that have developed careers uh, using their communication skills you know, that they got from our program and they're continuing them on in their professional careers. Yeah, so say someone's listening to this and they're like, I'm really interested now in, in this program. What, what does the application process look like uh, for a student applying? Yeah, so um, we have two uh, application cycles each year. So uh, students who are interested in applying for uh, the, the spring term, so the term that just just started or the one that will start it a year from now, um, that application uh, period is, uh, our, our deadline is November 1st uh, for, for spring starts. Uh, for students interested in starting in the fall, so this, this upcoming uh, fall term, our application deadline is, is April 15th, so tax day. Um, so if you're uh, interested in, in starting the, the uh, MA program this fall, uh, April 15th is, is the deadline to, to get your application materials in. Um, that's also the, the application deadline for the GTA program, too. So when you submit your application materials for the MA program, you can also do the same for, for the GTA program if you're interested in being considered for that. Um, the uh, the Program requirements, uh, we require a, a 3.0 um, GPA overall uh, or in your last uh, 60 uh, semester units. So, you know, a lot of students really uh, thrive once they get into their their major. Right. And so we you know, we 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 recognize that and we want to pay attention to those uh, later units, especially to, to make sure that your, uh, um, you know, your trajectory is headed well heading into uh, to graduate studies. Um, we also, you know, if, you're, if your GPA is just below that 3.0 level, but you really think you've got a strong application for us to consider, um, please send it along. We, 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 we don't want to just reduce any student to a number. And so if, uh, um, if you're below that 3.0 cusp, uh, submit your application, and uh, we'll certainly pay attention to uh, the the other factors, which I'll, I'll talk about in just a moment for uh, for application materials. So, um, we um, international students, uh, we we just like other programs ac across campus, we have uh, language proficiency score of uh, 550 for TOEFL. Uh, or 6.0 for the IELTS, um, but uh, those are the basic, um, you know, requirements for students coming coming into the program. Uh, for in terms of uh, application materials, uh, we ask applicants for contact information for three letter writers. Um, you don't. Um, you can actually submit your application um, without those letters in hand. Uh, once you hit submit, it gets sent off to the letter writers saying, hey, uh, you know, so-and-so would like you like your recommendation. We definitely encourage you to reach out to them first so that they know why they're getting an email, uh, you know, saying, hey, will you write a letter of recommendation for this person? That's 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 good practice. But um, but yeah, we ask for contact information for three letter writers. Um, it's great if you can, you know, have some uh, some some previous faculty members. Uh, it is an, an academic program. And so we, we value the perspective of um, of previous instructors. Uh, but if you've got someone else in your life, uh, uh, you know, a coach, a faith leader, um, you know, a, a previous employer who can speak to your, um, you know, preparation for graduate study, uh, certainly we, we welcome those letters as well. Uh, we ask for a sample of, of academic or professional writing. Um, graduate study, it's reading intensive, but it's also writing intensive. And so we want to you know, make sure you're, you're well prepared to um, communicate effectively uh, in, in written form uh, as you're, you're heading into uh, graduate study. Um, at the same time, we also know you're going to be learning plenty about effective communication in the program, uh, effective use of things like APA style and those sorts of things are, are things that uh, are built in the program. But we do want to see that you can uh, communicate effectively in writing. And so we, we want to see a, a writing sample to that effect. Also helps us get a sense for your interests and get a sense for your um, uh, uh, the arguments that you that, that you like to make, um, and uh, so we, you know, if you've got a, a great you know class paper that you're proud of, or a um, you know a piece of professional writing, uh, maybe a grant application or a news article you wrote, that those are certainly welcome pieces. Um, we also ask for a, a one-page essay uh, relating the MA program to your life or career goals. So you know, what are you what are you coming to uh, to graduate? study for, right? Why, why communication studies? What are you uh, curious about and passionate about? 
Uh, and what do you want this degree to be able to do? Where do you see yourself going with it after you're, uh, after you're done? Um, students who are, are interested in the uh, GTA program are asked to prepare a, um, a CV, a curriculum vitae, or, uh, or a resume, um, as well as a one-page statement of intent in terms of your um, interest in and, and preparation for the GTA program. Do you have anything you want to add there, Dr. Grant? Uh, no, I would just add that, um, you know, for our students that are, you know, wanting maybe some support in writing this, this statement of intent or, you know, um, have something they are thinking about for a writing sample, but maybe it needs a little bit of polish or something like that. We have the, the writing center on campus that is happy to help you. And that's part of what they do is help you write these pieces and polish them up um, for these kind of applications, whether you're applying to us or to another program. So I would just put a plug in for them. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, the, you know, one thing I would add too is that um, uh, the Office of Graduate Studies has really terrific resources um, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of workshops for preparing students for the application process. Um, they've got workshops on uh, uh, asking for letters of recommendation. They've got workshops on preparing your, uh, you know, statement of intent or, or one-page essay. Um, they also have workshops on how to navigate the um, Cal State Apply website, which is the website that students use to apply to our MA program or to any other uh, MA program or or, or, or uh, bachelor's program for that matter, across the Cal State system. So a question about the, the recommendation. So I know you were mentioning that it doesn't all have to be from faculty. I'm sure it'll be nice to have it from faculty. But of course, you know, sometimes we'll tell students that it's great to get to know your professor. So that way, if you need to approach them for a recommendation or a letter of rec, that they might be happy to write that for you. But they can only write so much if they only know so much about you. Um, but students might feel intimidated to how do I even start that conversation? This is the professor that's teaching my class. Um, you know, I'm taking my exams or doing the papers. I get my grade. How do I talk to them? Uh, and any advice for for students? Dr. Grant, do you have thoughts? Yeah. On that? So, I mean, when you're in the class, anytime you can connect um, what the class is doing to something they're interested in or your own life experience. Uh, doing that and sharing that with your professor through your work or through conversations in class, outside of class, is a great thing to do. Um, and then when you're approaching that professor for this letter, one of the things that I, I think is helpful for me when students approach me is, I had you for this class, this really helped me in these ways, and I'm looking to, you know, apply to a program and could you talk about these kind of things in your letter that I did in your class that I think are relevant for the program and sometimes you don't know all those things up front that's okay you can have a conversation with us like we're, we're nice people um, and you know when you reach out to me and say I'd like to write a letter of recommendation I'm like okay well let's have a conversation about that <coughs> and we can kind of uh, often those conversations kind of reminders of like what you did in the class and what might be applicable for your your letter my letter or for your statement of intent kind of come up in this conversation so reaching out having that conversation it doesn't have to be a long one um, but just reaching out and saying hey i enjoyed your class i got this out of it that that makes me immediately motivated to like okay i want to help you how can i help um, to write the letter so i'll pass it over to you tc yeah, and I think it also helps to, uh, you know, tell the, that faculty member why you're interested in that, uh, that program you're applying to. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly, you know, give them, uh, you know, a link to the, the program so that they're able to, it doesn't mean that they're going to go and do a bunch of, you know, research on your behalf about this, this program and that program. But uh, it certainly helps to, to know about you as a, as a student um, beyond what they might, you know, remember from, from having you in class. Um, but also to uh, you know 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 why you you're doing what you're doing right. Uh, sometimes I think it can be helpful helpful if you already have the um, one page you know um, essay that, that mm -hmm. most programs ask for, including ours. Um, give that to the letter writer right mm -hmm. and say hey here's my you know here's my essay so you can get a sense for why I'm applying to 
this program. Um, and then they've they've got a good you know good idea of what to uh, include in their their letter as well. So I think those can, that can be helpful. They might even give you a little bit of feedback on that that uh, that essay too. Right, and and I'll ask uh, students sometimes if you have that that letter or that statement or a draft of it to share it with me. If you have a resume, share that with me because oftentimes you have, you know, relevant work experience or or other relevant experiences that are on there that I can kind of fold into my letter in that recommendation that I might not have known about you just from having you in class. Nice. Yeah, no, great advice. And if a student has questions, they want to find out more about the MA in Communication Studies, where do they go? All right. Yeah. So, um, well, before I get to that, I want to mention I, I didn't finish uh, on the application process. Oh, okay. um, the, you know, when students actually, when you actually go to submit those application materials, right, the, uh, um, the, 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 the contact information for your letter writers, the, the one page essay, uh, et cetera, your writing sample. Um, students go and submit that at the Cal State Apply website. So that's um, calstate.apply backslash, or sorry, calstate.edu backslash apply. Um, if you just search Google search Cal State Apply, uh, it's easily found. Um, but uh, in terms of you know more information about our MA program, uh, we have a website, uh, which is uh, um, a page on the um, Department of Communication Studies what website at CSUSB. Um, it's got a long URL though. So what I like to do to uh, tell students how to get to information about our program is to go to our, our Linktree page. Uh, so that's L-I-N-K-T-R dot e, e backslash CSUSB comgrad. So L-I-N-K-T-R dot e, e backslash CSUSB comgrad. All right. And uh, that's a you know a great way to to find out about our, our program. And we've also got a number of uh, of social media accounts, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Uh, we've got a YouTube page with a bunch of uh, video video interviews with um, alumni and faculty from our, our program. Um, and all of those have the same handle uh, at CSUSB Comgrad. So uh, CSUSB C O M M G R A D. All right, sounds good. A lot of great information. Uh, hopefully, uh, students listening to this will um, be applying and, and get interested in this uh, program. But thank you both for being on the podcast today. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Hey, Matt, one one other thing, if they want to sure. uh, just reach out to us directly. Um, my email is uh, corrigan at csusb.edu. Um, and anyone's more than welcome to and reach I'm out. And I'm jgrant at csusb.edu, J-G-R-A-N-T. Um, so students can reach out to me about the GTA program. All right. Sounds good. Thank you both. Thank you very much, Matt.